Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of THFE. This is Paints, and today I want to show you guys a flood map called Favela Vengeance, which was created by Remkings. Now this map is kind of a reimagination of a Halo Reach infection map, which was called uh, Favela Run. Now I'm going to be focusing on the Halo 4 map uh, Favela Vengeance uh, for one because this isn't a throwback video to Halo Reach and I've had so much experience playing on this map and it really does deserve to be spotlighted just because of how balanced it is and also because of the atmosphere within the map. This map is a little bit of an oldie but it's definitely a goodie. <laughs> so. Favela Vengeance is set on Forge Island where Remkings has kind of crafted these slums that you roam through. Uh, of course you'll be stopping at multiple holdouts along the way and also finding weapons. And if you're lucky enough you'll make it all the way inside of the last building where you bunker down in the safe room. Uh, what you'll see at the end of the video is not so safe. So one thing that Remkings has always designed for in his maps is teamwork. And these are the kind of maps where you have to be communicating with your team if you want to come close to getting to the end of the map. Things like letting your team know where the flood are and when the next area opens are just some examples of how you can use teamwork on Favela Vengeance. And this is really what separates a map like this from other linear maps where lone wolfing it can get you further than actually sticking together and watching each other's backs. So if you're going to be playing this map in a custom lobby, I suggest trying to get everyone to put on their mics and work together. But without further ado, let's hop into some gameplay. Now the first thing you're going to notice is the flood initial spawns, which tower over the human initial spawns, uh, giving the flood quite the advantage. Um, that being said, there's two ways you can go about starting off on this map. The first one is killing the first two flood, and the second way would be to keep sprinting and completely ignore the flood and just focus on getting to that first holdout to get set up. So once you're at the first holdout, you'll need to watch several entrances that the flood can use to ambush the humans. Now if the flood are smart, uh, they will not use the same routes over and over. Uh, instead, they should try and use the more unexpected routes and to, to throw the humans off even more, I suggest grouping up and crouching before jumping down into the holdout. Now what this is going to do is make it extremely difficult for the survivors to predict where the flood will drop down from. And as you can see in the gameplay, it's very easy for me to lay down fire on the flood as they charge because I can see them on the radar um, so I know exactly where they're coming from before they even expose themselves. So with 3 minutes remaining in the game, uh, there will be a crate and a plank that spawns in which gives you access to these gravity lifts and the gravity lifts of course take you to into the next area. The thing that's cool about this is humans have to turn their back on the flood spawns to try and navigate to the next holdout and move on. Now this is often where a lot of humans will get killed and again where the teamwork comes into play. And as you can see we're getting set up in the next area which is this, this more open garden kind of area uh, in which you hold out on top of this storage building and you can actually break open some barriers to get power weapons on the lower level of the storage building and this is probably my favorite phase uh, for two reasons as a human I'm able to use precision weapons uh, not too long ago you saw I picked up a sniper rifle and a magnum so I'm able to cover the survivors if they wanted to go for those power weapons the other reason why I love this phase is the flanking routes um, while playing as a flood now they obviously do not function when Paints has a sniper and a magnum uh, and having played this map a billion times I can hold it down pretty well but usually the flood are able to start converting more survivors using the cliff and the taller building on either side of that holdout. Now moving forward you can see there was a man cannon that spawned with 145 remaining in the round. It is extremely important to use teamwork and call out when that lift spawns in so that you're teammates can move into this next area. So in this next area the survivors are limited in terms of movement in fact if you fall off the building you will be converted to flood and this is not only something to watch out for as a survivor but as a flood as well. 
And also, something to remember about the teleporter system that the Flood use is, it's super random, meaning that you could have 3 or 4 Flood spawn in at one teleporter in a very short amount of time, or you could have Flood spawning all around you, it's pretty much luck of the draw uh, when you use a teleporter system like that. So we're just about to head into the last final safe room here and actually something pretty hilarious happens coming up right here. I'm one of the last two humans when my teammate gets killed by a trip mine. Uh, now just to be clear this is not the map's fault, this was Halo 4's lag that he was killed by, but regardless it leaves me in a pretty bad situation, I'm the last man standing. I do manage to get a rampage before getting overrun by the flood, but uh, that pretty much wraps up the video guys. I really suggest downloading the map if you haven't played it yet. This has to be one of the most fast paced balanced um, linear maps in Halo 4. And make sure you guys grab the right game type, it'll all be in the description. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.